<laughs> Hi, everybody. I was just testing your hearing. I'm Aaron. <laughs> I'm Jody. Uh, and we've already introduced ourselves, so you don't get any more. I'm sorry. I a little <laughs> off the ball. Uh, I think I think what's what's start what's uh, stumbled me there is uh, somebody pointed out Niraj is not welcoming, Sumele is still welcoming, and you're right. I was just thinking, I gotta go through and change all those screens now. So, um, yeah, who is it? Who called that out? Karsten. Karsten got that. Pointed out that, uh, yeah, got the wrong, wrong scale figure welcoming you, so I apologize. That's okay. It's only been three days. That's true. I, I, I figured we got like a week window, right? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so welcome to Friday afternoon. We're here hanging out live with SketchUp. We're going to do some modeling. It's awesome to see you guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you for hanging out with us. Um, yes, a new version of SketchUp did drop last week. So we are looking at SketchUp Pro 2022. That's what we'll actually be using today. Uh, this is the first live stream with the, li with the uh, new version. So kind of a big hope deal. I hope it works. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be real good. Um, yeah, what else we got going on? Uh, we are still selling tickets to 3D Basecamp. So 3dbasecamp.sketchup.com. You can go pick up your tickets. We are planning that moving it forward. We have an uh, initial agenda coming up in the next couple few weeks. Uh, by the end of next it's, month, we'll have something out. It's going to be pretty cool. Is one of them going to be how to attend a convention wearing a face mask? I figure we all got that figured out already. <laughs> We're all experts in that. We we all know how to how to put the, keep the thing on. Um, yeah, so we'll see. We don't know. I mean, just to cut off some some questions, we don't know what exactly it's going to be like in uh, September 2020, but we think things are going to be better by then. So we're uh, we're hoping we're we're optimistic about the outcome. Uh, really hoping that uh, things have cleared up by then, and Canada is cool with us all coming in and taking part in a convention, but we'll do what we can. Um, if you are interested in that and you want to buy a ticket and you want to save some money, if you put in my name, hold on. If you put in <laughs> this, all, all these letters without the space, without get rid of this space right here, just, just all those letters together, it'll knock a uh, $150 off your ticket price. So worth nice. checking out. If I'm already comped for a free ticket, can I just go and enter that that name and get the free money? See what happens, I guess. I don't know. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't know how that that works, but yeah, it's worth trying. Every it's, you know, it's like when people say, "How do I do this?" or, or "What happens when I click this?" I uh, just try it, find out, see what happens. <laughs> you know, what's the worst that could happen? Most most likely, things won't blow up. So yeah, that's true. Oh goodness, did did you call the new version of SketchUp SketchUp 2020? Maybe you're being Ken suggesting that you said 2020 instead of 2022. I could it's harder have. to say 2022. It's it's a little tongue twist, tongue twistery. Yeah, I maybe mean, said 22, 20, 20. I, I there's F, I, every possibility. Right. I said 2020. This I, is not the first time first time I've been on a call with you and you're slurring your words. So <laughs> it's Friday. It's been a long week, guys. I'll be totally honest with you. But we're here. We're gonna get this done. All right. I appreciate the honesty in identifying the day of the week. Yeah. It's good. So everybody says, says uh, you know, Friday's the good. Oh, you made it to Friday. I usually find that, like, I'm pretty much done by Friday, and it's not necessarily the best day. <laughs> <laughs> like, sliding into home right now. Oh, I can do it. I can make it. Um, but yeah, 2022 is what we are going to be using. That's actually what's on the screen behind me right here. Uh, we are going to be modeling some buildings today. So if you're not on our forum already, check out forums.sketchup.com. I did upload a couple of images it's going to work off of. I'm not going to do photo matching like this. It's going to be kind of freewheel modeling. Um, but we're gonna, our goal is to get like three structures in place fairly quickly. So that's going to be kind of the goal of what we're doing today is uh, modeling at kind of a lower level of detail, but massing out, putting out some basic details and getting them into our model fairly quickly. That's kind of what we want to try to get done. Um, we are working off of the model that Tyson finished up last week. So this right here is uh, that tabletop he put in. Uh, got some of those, those face me trees dropped in there. I did um, upgrade his train. I, I dropped in the cars I made. So that's why I call it an upgrade. 
So we do have the <laughs> the coal car in my red caboose there back at the end. Um, no offense to Tyson's model, of course, but that's what it is. Although he did, he was uh, casting shade upon himself for the de the design of the layout. Yeah, he he's he was not happy with the way it turned out. It looks like a cartoon duck or something from the side, like a little. Oh yeah, I could see that. See it? Yeah. All right. Well, hey, let's let's quit talking. Let's start modeling. Time time to get clicky. Let's uh, let's yeah, do this thing. Shut up or ship out or whatever that expression is. Shape up or shut up. Uh, I, th right. I think I think I've heard it used. Shut up and model, Aaron. I think that's the way it goes. Yeah, probably. You probably hear that a lot. <laughs> All right, let's get in here. Let's do some stuff. Um, I did actually. I wanted to illustrate something real quick right here. I did download Tyson's model, and uh, I. I I don't know why I felt compelled to share this, but he, when he uploaded it, he did have profiles turned on. And I was noticing, wow, this is really staggery. Like, look how, look at, I mean, there's a little juddery and, or a little bit of, of a delay with uh, modeling, but this is not moving smoothly on my screen. It's pretty rough. And just turning off profiles, look at the difference this makes. It's totally, Even totally smooth. Even with a space mouse, it's yeah. not fast. No. And I think I think the issue is these trees, because this is a lot of geometry for SketchUp. When you turn on profiles, SketchUp has to go through and every time you move the model, figure out what is creating the outside edge of geometry and draw it thicker. So drawing it thicker is not hard, but going through and figuring out every time you move what's now the outside edge of every piece of geometry, that can add up. So if you are see if you see a lot of stagger or stutter as you're trying to move around, whether that's with the space mouse or with the regular orbiting, turn off profiles. It's kind of the, the biggest one. Shadows, of course, is a big one too. Um, I almost never use the only time I use shadows is like getting that thumbnail image or the output image at the very end. Other than that, I leave shadows off because same thing. Every time you move your model, it has to recalculate where the sun's hitting the model and how the shadow should fall. So as you spin your model around, it's constantly redrawing those shadows every frame. So shadows and profiles, big, big, uh, big saver as far as performance inside SketchUp. Always good advice. Oh yeah. Okay, the other thing I did do is I did clean up uh, Tyson's tags a little bit. So I did put trees, train, and landscape on their own uh layers so what we're gonna do again great for performance yeah yeah t toggling stuff off sketchup is so what you gotta remember about sketchup is sketchup only draws what you can see on the screen it's why sometimes when you're zoomed out it'll be a little slow with orbiting but then when you get in it'll all of a sudden get nice and smooth because when i'm looking at it like this there's not much there that it has to draw on the screen right whereas if i go out here it has to draw everything in my model every time i move um, so just something to think about some, some bonus orbit or some bonus, uh, performance tips there thrown out. All right. Um, we had a couple of questions come through that was just, just caught my eye. Um, first off, Hey everybody, we got a lot of comments. We're already like 10, 10 minutes in and we've already got like a page and a half of comments. That's awesome. I appreciate you all saying hi. And I apologize for not directly saying hi back. Hi. Okay, um, a couple questions did come back. Uh, Brad was asking about M1 performance. I don't have an M1 Mac, uh, but I have heard both from coworkers and from people on the forum that they are seeing uh, improvements in smooth, smooth work. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the thing I saw was like they were getting 60 FPS versus 40 FPS from Intel Mac or Intel's 2021 SketchUp on an M1. Oh, but so yeah, it's it's much faster than 2021 on an M1 than I don't remember. I remember I don't even remember how it all broke broke down. But basically, yes, it's all it's all compiled natively, SketchUp and layout, and works much much quicker. Awesome. I, I guess there's I guess there's a known issue with the I'm trying to remember what the what the the tags are called, the classifier format, uh, the importer oh, IFC? importer for bringing this. Yeah, IFC importer like is not compiled for it, so it maybe that didn't work. So oh okay. So if you do a lot with that, I think I saw someone saying they're going to have to go back to 2021 until we can fix it. <clears throat> okay. Which is fairly easy too, because the file format's the same for 21 or 22. So you don't have to do any like 
backwards save or anything like that. So that's kind Yay, of cool. versionless file formats. Woo! We made it, guys. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's kind of cool. M1 should be should be performing well. Like I said, I don't have an M1, so uh, everything I'm doing is on the M0. I don't know what's <laughs> pre M1. In, Intel. Intel. Aw, uh, wah, wah. No, wah, I'm just kidding. Wah. Um, maybe you know what we should do? We'll start that. You remember the release the Snyder cut move on social media that got uh, the new version of Justice League? We'll have one of those for Get Aaron an M1. And we'll have all go. you guys start blasting. <laughs> no, I'm pretty happy with the laptop. I can't complain. Okay. So, yeah, we're, we're going to model some stuff. Um, I shared a couple pictures up on the forum and i'm just going to model off those um i'm just going to slide over here to the side model something not to scale i'm just going to get the model and get the geometry in and then we'll go in and we'll scale it back to make it fit in the drawing uh or, or in the model later on so i'm going to go ahead and start by importing i'm going to start with the outhouse we're going to start simple and work our way up all right i'm just going to double click that so this is an image of a scaled uh, outhouse. So this is actually like something that's sitting on somebody's train somewhere, train, train set somewhere. Um, I figured this is pretty easy to just knock out quickly. I'm not going to go into a ton of details. I'm not going to model the boards or anything like that. Um, but I think this would be a pretty good warm up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with a rectangle. And like I said, I'm not, I don't want to get into uh, exact scale or anything. I just want to model everything so it's uh, a good uh, scale to itself. So re relatively uh, scaled. So I'm going to start with a square and I'll pull that up. And again, just about the right size. I'm going to just, this is kind of, this feels like the, the demo of how to draw a house in SketchUp, except it's slightly distorted in that it's an outhouse shape. Which, um, you know, that, that's fine. There's plenty of living creatures. Mice, I'm sure. That's right. I do want to get this, get some walls in here that would be thin. But I'm going to take this and I'm just going to run that straight up like that. Looks good. I'll grab that intersect face with selection. And then I can get rid of this top. Erase this. And, okay, there we go. So we got the shell of the house right now. You um, should totally use the lasso tool for that. Oh, Yeah. I got to remember to to use uh, new tools where possible. Uh, may, maybe I can make a mess of some tags and clean them up later. That'd be great. Nice. All right. I'm gonna draw a rectangle like this. <laughs> Trans someone to know if you're gonna make it two story. Ooh, <laughs> that's a losing scenario for everybody. Nobody, <laughs> I get top nobody wins. Yeesh. Ooh. All right. So that shell right there. I'm just gonna take that and make that my first group. That's just the piece right, that I want to start with. Then I'm going to come in here and maybe make a, uh, a roof piece. So I feel like I don't ever use rotated rectangle. And this is one of those times where you might want to do it. So if I come in here and try to snap a rectangle like this, I get, as soon as I get up to the peak, it snaps to the wrong orientation. It's trying to figure out what I want to draw. And that is a valid rectangle between those two points, but it's not quite correct. <laughs> it's a horrible roof. It is It is bad. So what I would probably do is I would probably come to this face right here, hit shift to lock to that plane, and then draw up like that to give me that rectangle. That's what I would probably do. But I want to share, because rotated rectangle is an option, uh, what I can do here is click here, click here, and then pull across here to get that same shape without inferencing if that's your thing that you like to do. Uh, just wanted well, to share it that. It's good to see that because I always forget about doing, creating the inference off of a plane. I always forget how to do it. I'm horrible at remembering that. Yeah, that's, I, you know, I, I, I'm horrible about using rotated rectangle because I'm always like, oh, I could just, I think one of the problems I have with rotated rectangle is that I've spent so many years of using SketchUp without it. I've come up with all the tricks to not use it. <laughs> yep. So now that it's here, I just don't, uh, I don't use it enough. Yeah. Lasso and freehand are going to be the same way. Dang it. You're right. Freehand, I mean, freehand oh man. Freehand especially, because I mean, I feel like that was just, 
that's probably the the least used tool in yeah. existence. I I so much like I love freehand now. I've I've been playing around with it. Uh, I had to do the the 2022 release skill builders, and like it's it's the it's the the it's the tool I wanted it to be. <laughs> and it's finally there. I'm like, oh, look at these nice smooth arcs. And then we go from the ground and then go up the wall and come back down. Oh, so cool. I love it. Um, I'm going to grab that. Keggy wants, wants to know how those two different options affect the axis on the rectangles. Does it affect it? Uh, I mean, I guess if you're not doing it as a component, it might not be. Right. Yeah, I mean, they're, the the axis to this is still the same as the world, same direction as the world axis. Um, when you draw when you draw a rectangle, it doesn't really care how I draw it. So if I go grab this and pull it out over here, my my axis stays the same. Um, yeah, it doesn't like flip it either way. Rotate a rectangle too. So if I come over here with a rotated rectangle, and I go. Draw that at some weird angle. It's not going to change the, because when you draw when you draw a rectangle, you're just drawing a face, so it doesn't really have uh, uh, an axis. All right, um, all right. Time time to put some features into this thing. I'm going to start by putting a a floor in here. And do something. Kind of like that. Marcus Marcus wants to know the difference between outliner and tags. Good question. Uh, this is tags. This is outliner. Next question. <laughs> Okay, we can do better than that. Um, <laughs> probably, probably better. <laughs> so tags should be thought of primarily as visibility tools. Tag is applied to a thing. So when you when you you grab it, you create a tag, and then you apply it to a thing, and then it it is tied to that tag and respects that tag's visibility, color if you are coloring by tag, <clears throat> and line type. So that's applied to it. Outliner shows a hierarchy of everything you've created in the model. Regardless, there, there's actually no connection between tags and outliner. It's two different ways to see what's in the model. Tags will not show you what is tagged unless you do something like color by, by tag, but there's not a way to see a, uh, a nested list of what all's in your model uh, with tags. You can only see that through outliner. Likewise, you can't interact. So if I wanted to come over here and I wanted to directly uh, select my car, my coal car here without going in and nestling in. I just come over here, click on it, and now my coal car is selected. I want to go in deeper than that. I want to actually select uh, the coal group. I could do that just by picking on that, and it'll jump in there. So uh, Outliner is more of a way of navigating through your model, where Tags is more of a tool to help you with visualization. Something like that. Outliner definitely encourages you to name your stuff. Oh, yes. All your stuff. Yeah, and that can be hard too because groups don't actually prompt you for a name. Um, so you do want to be uh, conscious that when you start making groups, try to go back in after you've created a group and give it a name. All right. Uh, all right. For the most part, we got our our, uh, our stuff done here. I'm make, I'm making these as groups, not components. Uh, forgive me, Dave Richards, but um, I think that will work okay. I'm gonna get a door on here. I'm gonna pull that out to here. Again, make that a group. I'm going to rotate that slightly open like that. All right, and there we've kind of got. What I think would be a, a significant level of detail for something like what will end up being about this big on my model. So again, I would say we could go in and we could play with uh, put you know putting lines in for 
my, uh, my, my boards or something like that. And that would be cool, but we are 20 minutes into this model. Like this is one of three things I got to do, this most basic one. So I'm going to use some textures instead. Cause we're probably 20 minutes in because we have to try and establish that we're clever for the first five to 10 minutes. That's true. Do you guys believe that? Do we, do we trick? I mean, convince you? Did it work? <laughs> um, let's see here. So I'm going to go grab siding. And there's a siding I like to use. Ooh, this is kind of good. That looks nice. Oh, yeah. That looks like toy. That's that. That's outhouse siding if I've ever seen it. Yeah, I mean, if if I although it looks looks like it's metal, which I don't want to. It does. You're right. But it, I could see it either way. I mean, actually, whenever it gets as small as you're going to make it, it's irrelevant. But I was kind of thinking maybe maybe I'll save that and put it on the what's this one? Okay, I like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that one and I'm going to replace all the siding I just did by hitting option and clicking and it'll do all of them. It's a little yeah. bright. It is bright. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go home. It just gives me all the material. Wow. Somebody be using some, uh, some materials here, huh? I'm going to grab <laughs> this. <laughs> it kind of looks like somebody imported a component and then they didn't go back out and clean it up. This kind of looks like, yeah, trees were imported with maybe clear green stuff because we got one, two, three, four, 17 five, six, different shades seven, of green. Eight, nine, nine different greens that, that are in here. That's excessive. All right. So Lawrence, Lawrence mm -hmm. did also make a good point. You can't see it in your, your little drawing on the ground, but a proper, a, a proper outhouse would have a little moon, crescent moon cut in the door. That is true. We'll come back and we will add that. That's, that's a great call. All right, but first, since I'm in here, I'm gonna this this looks like maybe it's brand new and made out of redwood or something, but I can't have that. So if I come in here and I double click the material, I can actually come over to the color wheel here and I can actually change the color. I'm okay with a little bit of color, so I do want to still stick in the, uh, the orangish brown here, but I do want to go a lot lighter, a lot paler than what I have before. There we go. Faded by the sun. That looks better. Cool. Um, yeah, let's go in the door. Let's throw. Uh, at what point is it the appropriate time to say it looks like that that model looks like poo? I, I think I think you go with your gut on that one. OK. All right. I'll hold on to that then. Good job. I, I do feel like there needs to be a little more scatological humor tied to the outhouse while we can. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that I, I drew that little little uh, circle in the middle and nobody made a comment about it. I was a little cut, cut off yeah. guard, to be honest. All right, I'm going to grab this one and I'm just going to try. Boom, look at that whole thing. One go. Nice. Bam. Um, I'm going to delete the back wall of this. In fact, I'm going to just get rid of all that because we don't really even need it. That's all we need. And uh, I'll just go ahead and actually do that too. It kind of looks fancy. It looks like maybe this is, is, is maybe a sauna also. Maybe we put a little, yeah. put some burning coals over here because it's looking a little, a little, a little fancy. I would totally, um, well, no, probably not. Never mind. I would not sauna in that. I would not want to steep in the aroma. So good plan. All right. So I, I like, I want, I, I want to use this, this texture. Um, but I don't necessarily actually that, you know, a 10 on the roof would be applicable. I'd say that actually, I mean, you're not matching good. the drawing at that point. Anyway, that is true. Um, I'm going to break these two surfaces right here. So what I'm going to do is do these pieces. And then this one right here, I don't want to go vertical like that. So I'm going to grab it, texture, position, and just give it a quick spin. So it's, I'm not worried about being perfectly parallel, but about parallel. So I just have one continuous uh, like piece of metal there. I'm going to grab that, put that there. Oh, no, put that here because it's spun. 
And then this side, texture position again, and spin it the other direction. Too far. Say, uh, there-ish. Select that and put that on this side. Whoop. There we go. All right. And I'm going to call that done. So I'm going to grab that, make that whole thing, all the pieces together into a new group. And this is what I was saying before. If I want to see, have these pieces show up over here, I can call this, even though it's, it's a, a group and not a component, I can call this outhouse and I can actually apply a name to a group instance. It doesn't prompt you for it like it will if you're in uh, uh, creating a component, but you can force it in there. In fact, I can do that for all the sub pieces too. So if I was to come in here, I could call this, I call this, oh, oh, stop, stop clicking for heaven's sakes. There we go. Walls, grab this piece, call it the interior for your posterior. And we'll call this one door. And I'm assuming this guy is the roof. So again, if you're using components and there are some advocates who there's some people who say that you should use all the time, like just always use components. That's cool. It'll automatically prompt you for names. Uh, just don't click OK and let it name itself component one, component two, component three, because that's not that's not helpful. But if you do use groups, I recommend and I'm trying to be better about this myself. Some people that out there are going to call me out on this, but I'm trying to be better about uh, applying manually going in and putting those names in uh, as I go through. So. That's that's something you should be conscious of. All right, so that's our warm up. That looks that looked, that went pretty good. Um, I poop in that. Hey, that's that's the test right there. <laughs> we've passed. All right. So the question now is, how big is an outhouse? I'm assuming the doors are not like. I mean, what? Two feet? Like, is the door of an outhouse like two feet wide? It feels like that might even be a little, eh, probably. We'll, we'll, I think well, we can just say two feet. Yeah. We're, this would be luxury, luxury, uh, outhouse. So to, we'll call that to look at two. that, I don't imagine it was made with any sort of tolerances or specific, <laughs> it wasn't made to code. Odds, odds are very, very good. Yes, that is probably true. All right. So that makes this a, a, about a full size. So if this was, I forgot, how big is this? This is like eight feet wide, something like that. So it's 10 feet wide. So yeah, I buy that. So that door came out to be about what? Four feet, five feet tall. <laughs> it's a little, it's a, <laughs> it's a crapper for little people. Something doesn't seem right about that. Okay, so we may wanna, we may wanna come in here and just uh, stretch some of this up a little bit. So if I grab this, not a lot, but maybe I'll just put this up another 12 inches. Yeah, that works. In the door. So that puts our seat. That probably needs to go up too. All right, so we'll grab that. Take that up another six inches or so. All right, there. That's they're tall. They're tall, thin buildings, right? All right, so that looks realistic, I think. Um, now, here's the question. Does anybody remember off the top of their head what HO scale is? What is it? Was it 184th? Something like that? I honestly have no no memory whatsoever. <laughs> that sounds... 180, be. 187th. 187th. Who, who? Okay, whatever. All right, so if I do some quick math, on my on my math machine i feel like fahrenheit the dude mr george fahrenheit is the guy same guy that came up with ho scale he's just like let's pick an arbitrary number i yeah i'm like there's there's got to be something like is it the distance between the tracks at ho scale that's something there there's got to be a number I, somewhere that that okay 
Yeah, so, I mean, I think it's been ex explained in previous sessions. I just it didn't quite stick in my yeah. brain because okay, so here's nobody to talk about it too. Here's what that is: uh, one point zero or zero point zero one one four nine. So if I come in to scale this. 0.01149. Now, that, that little fella right there, we'll take over here, plop it down next to train and see if that looks realistic. Okay, so Lenny pointed out, and this is why it's so weird, is because it's half of O scale. An O scale, which is two times H O scale, probably makes a lot more sense. It's probably okay. still an arbitrary number. <laughs> All right, so that's our little uh, wow, our first house. I buy that. Nice. So, yeah. This is this uh, this window's about. Oh, it's to scale, so I don't know. Seven eighths of an inch. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. That's exactly what I was thinking. So that's is this is this about the same size? Because that should be about thirteen sixteenths, pretty close to seven eighths. In fact, within a sixteenth of an inch. So yeah. The head height on this door is about the same as the height of that window. I think we're we're in the ballpark there, right? Um, H, F of O. I see what you did there. It's it's like math with words. Oh, that's that's rude. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna set this way a little ways back. So if a train passes, you don't get the you you're you're not rumbled while you're working. In this in this guy um all right so that looks that's cool um so one of the things that's happening here you guys are probably catching up cut, catching on to this but uh we do have a, you know we're going through the thing there so what i'll probably do is i'll grab this stick that maybe up like that and then we'll grab this door this door should actually be up like about the height of the floor there we go that works so it's it's leveled it's on a it's, it's on a pad or something like that all right one one structure down which means i should probably save that's right nice nice how to do it myself all right Cool. Well, that was pretty easy. Let's keep this. Let's keep this rolling. Um, so yeah, I mean, just to, because we're not working off of any uh, actual like not re well, the real photos, but the real photos of tiny things. So I'm not going to do a match photo. I don't have any plans that are to scale or anything like that. But this is kind of nice because I can work off of just uh, you know general general frame of reference. One of the things that SketchUp does a good job at is let you just kind of move stuff around let's build a water tower so it's a little like doing furniture especially the way that they used to do with hand tools where oops it doesn't they're not always working with literally a half inch board it's give or take you know some amount so you're always measuring your next cut your next part based on your previous part rather than so it's all relative to its to itself not there you go some magical perfect number right yeah all right, so let's look at this thing. So we got, just boiling this down, I got a plat platform here. And that platform sitting on basically a support structure. And then we got a big circle up here with a, uh, looks like an octagon roof. Should be pretty easy, right? Um, I feel like- I want to go watch it. I want to see a video on how they would actually construct one of these. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming they start at the top or bottom and work up. I have the luxury of starting here in the middle and working both directions. <laughs> and we're going backwards. <laughs> they might have done that. I mean, it could be in olden times they just had, they were just smarter than us. That's, sometimes I believe that because I feel like they were happier than us most of the times. Um, um, but I don't know. When you look at those old photos where people are posing, they all look kind of pissed. I think yeah, they, were that was not, just, they weren't 100% that was just, sure if cameras stole your soul or not back then, though, so... Yeah, I think it was. They were probably glaring at the camera, 
it wasn't a, a mention it wasn't really a measure of their quality of life just their that makes sense well their luddite beliefs so here's so here's a question and i'm going to throw this out to you the viewers because i don't know the answer to this but i'm always wondering so i know when you had one of these by a side of a railroad it's got this little thing that this little spout that comes down and then you would you know the water could come out of here and go into the tanker car whatever but how they fill this i mean was this just rainwater was this like how, how did this get full of water i honestly kind of wonder about that right because it's not like there's a uh maybe they had like some a kind fire of hydrant nearby or <laughs> or plumbing necessarily that would run by yeah I don't, I don't know. Probably they would they would drive by with a bigger train, a taller train, <laughs> and then they would fill it up from a train so that the next train would be able to get it. See, I was, that, honestly, okay, so I did kind of have that thought. I'll be honest with you guys. Um, but then I'm thinking, but then tunnels don't work because the normal train car just clears the tunnel. Oh. So this taller Dang train it. car, I don't know. Right, so Modeling Disney says garden hose and Jay David says windmill pump. Oh, windmill pump. That's pretty, that's smart thinking. That could definitely be the I, thing. Right. It's like I've never heard of nor seen a windmill pump, but I think I can figure it out. Yeah. The name is is very is a very clear define uh definer of how it works. Yeah. That I, I totally believe that and don't feel compelled to verify or check into it at all. Thank you. That's where I'm at. Transom dropped some new words that I didn't know. Well, maybe one of them is a little he said they fill it with windmills or from a crick. And then in parentheses, a burr run upstream. And a, a crick, I just interpret as Southern or referring to a creek. Yes. A crick is just a, a smaller version of a creek, but I have no idea what a burr run is. Yeah, a crick's like a cricklet, basically. You, <laughs> a cricklet. You, cricklet. A, yeah. No, a, a crick is a creeklet. Yeah, that works. All right. That checks out. All right. So um... let me just look on the internet. <laughs> I don't know if anybody will have any opinions or thoughts on that on the internet, but you can always look. All right, so I'm uh, again just doing some 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 shape modeling to get me that give me that good platformy goodness. That looks awesome. All right, and then I'm gonna take one of these guys, bring it down. So I've been doing, because uh, I hate myself, I have been doing a little bit more Lego modeling lately. So this feels very familiar right now. Because it's so small or? No, because I'm taking pieces and like moving them around and snapping corners together and that sort of thing. Well, you're you're doing a great job, even without the. Okay, so since you're sort of a Lego, I guess specialist, what is the proper word for the little pips? Are they pips? They're studs. Are they? Oh yeah. Okay. I guess I had heard that. I mean, I don't think they're that cool, but I guess I guess they're studs. Sure. Okay, so Bill said that a burn is a Scottish word for stream. Which is ah. good because when I looked up Burr Run, I uh, the word the internet didn't even know what that word was. So because the internet's not Scot Scottish, that's true. I've heard that. I've heard you have to use a uh, translator. All right, how's that look? Looks a little short. Looks like I gotta go a little bit taller with these uh, these things. Since I'm not actually, a, I'm, I'm definitely taking some shortcuts here, but since I'm not cutting these pieces out of wood or anything like that, I all I'm really care about is the final geometry. I can do things like stretch the, the, stretch the pieces out, that sort of thing. Makes a lot easier to do this sort of thing. All right, I have some diagonal boards here. So I'm going to grab one of these to start with. Take that I'll option, copy that over to right here. And then I will angle it off of that corner because I want this corner right here. 
Nope, actually, I don't want that corner. I want... this corner right here to meet up with this corner right here. I'll write that down. I'll trim that this way, get rid of that. And then, hmm, I did that wrong. Because what should happen is I actually want to take this corner to here and then rotate this opposite corner to where it'll meet there. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. So again, push, pull that down. Oops, I didn't quite rotate that right. Easy fix. Oops. Ken wants to know what the hotkey was for moving one board from one side to the other and then filling it in evenly. I don't I don't think that they've seen that uh that aspect of the move array. Yeah, so when you copy something, you have the option, or when you move something, you have the option of copying it. And when you copy, you have the option of saying, make blank copies between my first and my final copy. And that's exactly what I did. It's called a, an array. And I just made a quick array when I did that. So I took one piece, used move option like that, and then said, Divide that by five. And then it gave me four copies inside that span. So evenly spaced copies. Evenly spaced, that's right. Actually, it's four copies inside of that span, and the fifth is the last one. That is correct. Yeah, I always have to double I always double check myself on that because I do too. <laughs> and I literally counted yours before I said that because I was like, wait, which one is it? Yeah. It's sort of like using the flip along. I always do it the wrong axis twice. I basically, it's always the third time's a charm. I was saying that to somebody. I said, you know, uh, I don't use flip along. I copy and then scale to minus one because it's fewer clicks than doing it wrong twice. <laughs> uh, but, you know, hey, to each their own. That's the nice thing about SketchUp, right? You can you do it however you want. All right, right. So I now have the two boards crossing in the middle here, these two support pieces. Um, because this top is a square, what I'm going to do is use rotate to find the middle. I come off the, the, the midpoint of one side, midpoint of the other. I'll get an inference for where those two meet. I said I'll get an inference for where those two meet. <laughs> there we go. All right. Hint, hint. And then what I could do is take a copy of that option key again, control on, on Windows, copy one, and then same thing if I say 3x. It'll give me a total of three copies spinning around that middle point. Um, a lot of times people use uh, copy just for, oh, but something's not, maybe it wasn't, maybe I didn't make a square. Maybe I made a rectangle because it looks like, oh no, no. these guys right here aren't square. That's the problem. Uh, well, you just got to take whatever lever shipped to you. It's not like a mill to step out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that's true. This is, this is the old West. I, Assume. I don't know. Yeah. Well, the fact that there's a outhouse. Yeah, I kind of suggest that. Even though the uh, the engine that is on our uh, our train suggests that maybe it's a little more modern, but maybe this is just an older town. That could be. It could be. All right. So I'm going to take, I'm going to move That's some funny more. Is, mm -hmm. I've watched plenty of, of uh, cow, cowboy movies in my time or i mean my favorite show growing up was the lone ranger but anytime i think of old west stuff it's always back to the future three yeah i was just gonna say that I, I got that exact same thought as i was thinking about trains i was thinking about doc brown yeah it's all the only old west had a delorean in it <laughs> i bet somebody somewhere would uh have issue with that but i'm good with it all right so we do have a little bit of an intersection happening right here because this piece is hitting. Um, so what I probably do is I'll just come over here and maybe cut this guy off like that. And probably actually pull this guy back out like that. Something like that, I don't know. Um,
All right, I want to give it the appearance that it's got some support going on, and I think I think we did that. So let's move on. Um, oh, you want to do a brace at the bottom too? Yeah, I guess square. we should do these little things right down here. Uh, we'll just grab some I more guess... of the same board and just slap them on there. So I'll grab grab one of these. Option, copy that down to here, and then I will flip it upright like that. Option, copy that over to here. Okay, I don't, I don't mean to completely derail everything here, but I just got a notification. Today is Lego Day. <gasps> I don't even know what that means. I don't either, but I should probably buy some Lego on the way home to celebrate. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, to that end, you could probably celebrate Lego Day every day. Yeah, Lego Day is something Except that Legos are expensive now. Yeah, yeah, they really are. I did... Uh, so for Christmas, my uh, nieces, because they know me and because they're awesome, got me a Lego uh, helmet. I don't know if you guys have seen those, but I got the, uh, I, sorry, I talked and, and lost what I was doing. I wanted to make an array of these works. two. Hold on. We'll come back to the story. Divide that by three. There we go. And then I'm going to take these ones and just use scale to put them inside like that um but they got me the uh speeder bike stormtrooper helmet and man oh nice i'm <laughs> i'm always impressed with like how people take different shapes that the lego masters or engineers or whatever take different shapes and make stuff out of it but making a head shaped thing out of square bricks and building in five different directions off of one central piece it is impressive it is really cool those are some cool sets all right i'm gonna grab all that and make that a group which i'm gonna call the base um all right you know, I really, I did make, I made all these groups and I'm thinking I probably should have made some of these components because it would make, make coloring them a little easier. Uh, but let's, let's, let's talk about that real quick. Let's just go ahead and grab our, our wood colors. And I tend to generally kind of just use that thing for wood, which is probably it good looks, enough looks, for that. Looks spot on to me. When I scale that down, that's going to look just fine. So, yeah, we'll go with that. All right. So now, going to again try to find the center. So the issue that's happening right now is I'm getting some, uh, I'm inferencing some pieces that are below the surface when I was zoomed out like that. Uh, kind of the, uh, kind of a, another version of Z fighting, which of course is when. When you get the two images flickering off of each other, you can get the same thing with inferencing, unfortunately. Every time I hear Z fighting, I just think of like French duelists or something. <laughs> All right, it is time for Z fighting. Ah, I was gonna say why why French, but now I now I understand. <laughs> that makes total sense to me. All right. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna grab all of that and I'm going to make it vertical, make a copy. Two X, give me that. And actually go three X, no. Oh no, stop, stop, stop clicking. Sometimes I get a little click happy. Try that again. Option, four X, there we go, no, whoa, that was, one one too many still. All right, so what do we have? We have one, two, three, four bands. One, two, three, four. I don't I don't need you. There we go. And then this one goes up a little bit to the roof. Cool. I like that. That looks good. Um Lawrence now. said Lawrence asked if you just added material to a group. So that's very naughty. I know I cut I so cut corners on that one. Um, I I believe I released a video about a week ago telling people or two weeks <laughs> saying don't do that. 
Uh, which generally speaking, yes, uh, this that's not the ideal way to do it. Because if I come in here to this thing right here, and I select one of these spaces, it's going to tell me it has no material on it because it's actually the containers, container two, two containers deep that actually has that material on there. I really, what I should have done is come down here and apply that material directly to this space. Like I said, I should have also made these components because that also would have made that a lot easier. I should, I feel like I need to fix, fix what I did, what I done. Um, undo what you did yeah but right after that bill then dropped another bit of wisdom and said lay a polygon with four sides down instead of a square and then you can inference the center of the poly directly that's true that's very smart good thinking where do you guys get that these smarts from probably tyson huh yeah i'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a tyson thing i believe so all right so i'm going to use a tool here i'm going to right click on this thing and i'm going to see that i have if i look up here i have nine group copies if I come in here because I have Selection Toys installed, so Selection Toys is an extension from TomTom, Tom, one of the first extensions I put on my computer when I get when I update my versions. Uh, in fact, maybe one of the few that has actually been installed on 2020 at this point. And I'm gonna say convert into components. So now if I pick that, I have nine components. If I come into that, in those nine components, I double click, see they're lighting up there and there. And now I can say, okay, now, put my wood color on there, and now that actually colors all of them. Same thing, come down here. Convert Bill said components. he learned all this stuff from you. No, oh, then also from Box and Dave R. Not bad guys to, to follow around, those guys. Hmm. Um, also, what's the name of the, what's your key logger thing called? Uh, visualize. Honestly, I don't care for it. So I, I would recommend against it if you're looking for a way to show your keystrokes. It's temperamental at best. Um, so if anybody has any recommendations for a different one, I would love to hear it. I so got nothing. I have a couple of groups here that did not uh, copy correctly. So I am, rather than messing with main copies, I'm just double clicking into each one. This one has six copies, so I will say, make that a component. And then these other two are the ones I trimmed. Let's see if they're the same. No, they're not, so. Okay, and then. All right, there, there that is done right. All right, back out here. Let's get this thing colored. I'm gonna start by coloring this whole thing with kind of a dark gray color. Uh, I see these bands here look like they're black. I don't tend to use black in my models because black is the color of my lines. So I generally use like one of these if I want black. That way I can still see my black lines over that dark gray color. Um, obviously, if you absolutely need it, go for it, use it. But uh, I tend to stay away from it myself. All right. Here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take... And let's see, let's see my hidden. I'm going to start by just filling this again with white so I can see it easier. Uh, and I want to make each of these divisions of the circle, uh, of the extruded circle, look like a separate board going around. Because if we look at the model down here, you can see, see these boards going around all the way. So I want, I want to intentionally leverage the geometry of this uh, circle and make it look like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and color it. I'm gonna go back to my uh, brick and siding. Uh, I'm gonna grab, well, maybe I'll use the same, this same material. And I will position that texture, or make it nice and big so that one, or well, maybe we'll do two boards. We'll go something like that. So we have two boards on there, filling up that one piece. Right now, before I go any further, I'm gonna adjust the color. So I'm gonna go back to my in-model colors, double click that, and I just want it to be like a little bit still wood colored, but like darker. I don't want to match this. You can see it, it does have a different color than what's in the base. So. That looks pretty good. That was kind of cool. 
All right, and then I'm going to take that. I'm going to go pick that and then just spin around here. Oh, I was trying to try to do it in one go. I can see I was I was a little bit off. My boards aren't exactly lining up to the seam, but it's still looking pretty good like that. There we go. And then I'll just go ahead and get rid of these guys. While I'm in here, I can delete these internal faces. There we go. I'll grab those. Option copy that straight up, 3x. And then grab that, that top, just the ring. Bring it back down like that. Well, that's pretty cool. I like the way that turned out. I'll go ahead and make that into a group. You know, just because just because I don't like open stuff like that, I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on there. Not that you have to, but I would know yeah, that was this, open on the inside. I think this is the perfect chance for me to say, just put a lid on it, Aaron. Thank you, thank you, Jody. Thanks for showing up. All right, I'll call it the tank. I'll be here all week. <laughs> all right, now we do have this octagonal lid right here which should be pretty cool uh it looks like it's got like kind of like beans or something coming out from the corner and then like a stepped i mean some kind of tile like a tile roof i guess some kind of tile going all the way up so we're gonna, we're gonna mimic something like that so both uh carson and ken recommend rotating each third so that they look slightly different oh you don't like this repeating pattern what if I was just very conscious and had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different trees that I felled and alternated. Could be, like or it could be you've just got eight, or you've got really long boards and you're just using those those round bandings the way you make a barrel. Yeah, which apparently Transom has has made a barrel, but he made a hot tub. And he said using those round bandings like that is tricky. I bet the best. All right. I'm going to go off the center of the circle, and here's what we'll do. No, actually here. I want to start by giving that some depth at the edge, and then I'm going to come in here. Pull that up. It doesn't look like it's very steep. It's a fairly shallow uh, shape, something like that. Which seems dumb to me. It should be convex. Or no, it should be concave so that it catches rainwater and fills it up. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, thank you. Jeez. Stupid old Westerners. No wonder they didn't have iPhones. <laughs> exactly. That's the reason. <laughs> you can barely figure out how to catch water. What do you expect? All right. So I'm going to go like that. I'm going to take this and push this down a little bit. Um. I'm going to do this. Come up with the intersection there. Actually goes like that. There we go. Um, I want to draw. I don't want to have to draw the whole. Uh, do this a bunch of times. So I'm going to just make one eighth of this root. And then we'll copy the rest. Ah, uh, there we go. Lawrence, Lawrence, be out there being voice of reason said that it would also catch critters. And I guess I don't want critters in my water. Critter water is gross. Sounds like an opportunity for protein to me, but well, sure, yeah, whatever. It's yeah. They're or you may end up creating super swimmers. <laughs> So that's what I think I want one eighth of this thing to look like. Uh, I'll just do this now so I don't have to do it again, but I'm going to grab all of, yeah, I guess we'll grab all that. Um, Transom, Transom called it Otter Water. Otter Water. I like that's, that. That's like a brand right there. It does. Yeah. Swing by the train station, grab me some Otter Water. <laughs> all right, I'm going to grab all of this. And again, I'm going to fill it with... Uh, just kind of that charcoal gray color. 
I think that's kind of what they got. They got like a, eh, look, maybe a little lighter. Something like that. And then right here, I'll actually use a texture. You guys realize I'm using more paint bucket in this this like hour of modeling that I've I've probably ever used. Yeah, this is very paint buckety. This is weird. Exciting. Oh, I'm glad because I'm I'm feeling very uncomfortable. I'm feeling I've like I've left my wheelhouse. Um. All right, let's grab some roofing, roof, roof, roofing, roofing. Roughing. Roughing. Roughage. Oh, that's nice. That looks real nice. Same thing. We'll go ahead and make this. It looks like just, just stretch that a little bit. Make those panels a little bit bigger. Ah, I actually kind of like that color too. I'm not even going to mess with it. All right. Then I'm going to grab everything that is that section and copy it seven times around the center and then that is kind of done so you got a little little thingy here so i'm just gonna do i don't know what that thingy is so it's it's that officially <laughs> that's my thingy that's the nice. thingy that's on there name it thingy wait what <laughs> so I just made this comment in, in a chat because they're okay. saying that probably high protein water might not be appreciated by the train. But so these things are largely for filling up the, the front tank for, to then be used as steam to be, you know, for creating the, the steam power, right? That makes sense. But this isn't, but this isn't a steam powered train. Well, yeah, we kind of, our, our whole deal got thrown off by having this, uh, <laughs> this train, this, this modern uh, engine right here, but. It's a cool model. So that's, but here's the thing. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this out. I'm so I am not a uh, scale model train owner or or operator. Nice of use kind. of a bunch of words in the same sentence. That's right. I don't do model trains, but I have seen model trains that do jump around between different like steam locomotives and modern passenger cars and vice versa. So you know when you're you're doing this for a hobby for fun. This could be this could be a realistic setup right here. This could happen. You sure. know. Sure. Yeah. Maybe it's an alternate timeline where steam go. goes right alongside uh we whatever that train uses. I mean we already talked about Marty McFly, right? Maybe he screwed up the timeline and this is what we get. There Thanks you go. Lot. Thanks a lot, You're, Marty. <laughs> we're just talking about the legacy sequels, and I feel like there could be a legacy sequel for Back to the Future. I like it. I don't and it's not something that I'm craving, but it's something that could be fun. I, get, I, I, I get wouldn't be opposed. Yeah. All right. So I'm not going to detail this thing out too much because we're, like I mentioned, we're kind of like halfway into this thing. But uh, I do want to get this pipe. This is a very, I think, I feel like distinct looking part of, of this. Uh there we go. Let me grab that. I do I do really appreciate whenever there is like a sort of a a cross between different technology eras. Like whenever I'm looking at concept art or you know, just messing around on Instagram and looking at art people have created. Like steampunk is fascinating fascinating to me. Any anything like that where mm -hmm. they they take two sort of two technology eras that did not exist, they did not coexist. And then you sort of mash them together. So I can appreciate I can appreciate the 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 fun that is hobby train hobbies. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, I'm going to do some selective smoothing. I want to keep these brakes right here, but I want to of course get rid of these. So rather than using the uh, soften and smooth UI, I'm just going to do that all right grab all that we'll give it that same not black black color except for we'll throw that that ultimate black right in there fanta black Ooh, yeah just disappears you can't see me all 
I tried some of that. I don't know if anybody here is a uh, into do you like soft dumb Sorry, art choice things to do things ways to spend your time but i did try some uh black 3.0 i don't know if anybody's ever seen that but i think we i think we got ava some for her painting stuff last year for christmas it's curious it is and it, it, it never seems to work quite as well for me as it does oh yeah the, no. the creator for some reason i don't know why but, but yeah no influencers seem to be infinitely better than anybody in my house at any of the things we do. <laughs> the expectation versus reality is uh, is it's, very real. Yeah, it's a little unfair. So Bill wants to know if you like soften or hide better. Which one is better? Um, well, it depends on what you want to get out of it. Uh, because what I will tell you is that um, soften is going to give me this nice smooth shading as I spin around. Hide is going to leave the faceted pieces separate and actually show me like the the light as it moves across the shadow is going to actually show me the facets. So if I'm if I'm emulating something that's perfectly smooth like an extruded circle like this, then I will definitely stick with uh with um smooth if it's something I use hide, the, the spot that I really only find myself using hide is uh, if I have two components that come together and I want to get rid of that line between them so it looks like they're seamless, I'll hide that edge. But I really don't use hide that often, I don't think. It's a good question, though. Did you put the did you put that in the center? Did you make sure it was the center of that I round did. thing? I snapped. It does not look like doesn't look like the center. No, no, the center, the downpipe is not in the center of the the round tank. Oh no, it's not, no. But I feel um, like the bottom would be oh I guess it, I guess they could have it. Like there's probably a slope at the bottom so that water all gets channeled to it. I would hope so, but I don't know. These guys didn't have iPhones, so maybe they didn't know what they were doing. That's possible too. But I mean, aren't these the same people that created the the pyramids? They should, they're figuring stuff out yeah, without iPhones. I don't know how. That's weird. Yes, I, I guess there was a day and a time when math was actually a little more necessary. Yeah, I wonder um, what Egyptian numbers look like. All right. So that's about as far as I'm going to go with this this thing right here. Probably oh. good. We're an hour and ten minutes in. Oh, yeah. We still got a, we still got the big building to do. That's right. We got the main Although building. Although it's not it doesn't have any round bits, so it really should be trivial. Anything is easy to the man who doesn't have to do it. That's right. <laughs> exactly. I'm glad you finally understand my position in this whole affair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's that's where we'll take that to. Cool. All right. Um, so I'm gonna grab all that. I'm going to make it into a new group. I'm going to call this the water tank. All right. Now the question comes, how do we scale this thing? Because, I don't know. Um, I guess I could say how high off the ground this is. I mean, or actually, you know what? I'm not going to even do that because I don't have any, whoops. I don't have anything that uh, I need to specifically reference, like a door or anything like that. And we've already discussed that this these wood sizes are sort of uh, arbitrary because Arbitrary. they're yeah. probably hand milled. So I'm just gonna. You might, if you're gonna add the ladder, you might do that while it's still big. Oh. <laughs> oh <laughs> now wow. it's small. <laughs> uh, we'll do it small, apparently, or uh, we'll we'll make a component and trick it. All right. So really what I was thinking is we'll scale this so that this pipe is like over the edge the... of where the front of the engine would be, right? So yeah, let's go smaller than that. So yeah, probably something around that size. Whew, I like it. I like it a lot. That's cool. So let's again 
Let's drop this. It's almost like Tyson made this with no concern for the fact that I had to put stuff on this landscape and didn't give me a nice flat spot. Yeah, it's a kind of a jerk move. Uh, by the way, Tyson is in the chat now. I don't know when he joined us, if he's been here the whole time. But this model he's... is so easy to work with. Great, well-modeled. Great job. I just, <laughs> all I just got to say. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. Hey, I can see there's several. There's like four different holes on the top of that train for filling it up with water. So oh, These look like water holes. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Let's let's dump a couple of gallons of mongoose water in there and see what happens. <laughs> we know what what <laughs> possum water. Otter, it's otter. It's otter water. It's the animal that rhymes with water, Aaron. Where, where do mongoose come from? I don't know. Maybe right. you just think otters and mongooses are the same thing. I thought no. Wait, mongooses are girls and otters are boys. I think that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, okay, and actually, I think it's mongoose. <laughs> <laughs> mongooses. Oh, always something new to learn on SketchUp Live. All right, so this is looking pretty cool. I like the way this is this is coming out. Um, I want to make a change though, so I'm gonna come in here. I am going to grab my new freehand tool, and I'm gonna. I went a little, I went a little quick back there. Yeah, geez, settle down. Do you ever ask how many people are new to the show? I don't recall ever asking. And I feel like, again, some of the other sessions this month, there have been people that the names look new and they seem to be trained folk. Yeah. So then I, I do wonder, like, how often do people, do we, do new people show up and how they discovered it? Because that's a, that's a, it's a curiosity. I feel like, you know, there's a handful of regulars. It would be good to know. There's so well, many places that we talk about it yeah. or we advertise it, if you will. Yeah. Right. Everybody, if this is your first time here, raise your hand. Say otter water. <laughs> what are you doing right there? Anyway. What's um, that? I'm just taking that freehand line that I created. Yeah, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Um, I was thinking it'd be cool to like, Put some some sandy ground in here. There's a couple ways I could do this. Uh, maybe we'll just do this in context to be a little bit better. All right. So first thing I want to do is I do want to I want to get this edge showing up. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to unsoften and smooth that edge. All right. That was good. All right, now I'm going to grab my freehand tool and try that again. So in context, I'm just going to kind of create a, a space here where I'll put like a sand con or sand color rather than the green grass. Something weird is happening right now. Oh my goodness, there's something weird happening all the time. That's pretty true. What is the deal? Okay. Uh, there, okay, there we go. Let's try that again. I'm going to save because uh, it's weirdness is happening. All right. I'm going to go draw lines freehand or try this again. Start over here. Oh, that's working is way this, better. Maybe, maybe this is the case for the M1. Get Aaron an M1. It lost, it lost me as I went around that tree. It, all right, there we go. Come around like that. Lauren said, when SketchUp is being weird, or if you're getting weird behavior, that's when you save. Ideally, you save after one weird before the second weird. Sounds like you don't have faith. That was probably a stupid thing to, to tempt fate with. All right, so, okay, I have weirdness. Never mind. I should probably just, just quit this, but uh, just not a quitter. Let's see if this, see if this breaks everything like I'm expecting it to. No, it didn't. All right. Undo, 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 undo. Let's get back to drawing some houses. That's what we're here for. All right. Get me out of here. I don't know. It's something to do with that mesh. Something going on with uh, with that big old mesh that 
that is that is the ground uh every time i try to interact with it it's it's acting odd it's probably something weird that tyson made it probably so this is really tyson's fault i really i have a hard time arguing with that logic okay so the, Ju julian's here from ghana i don't think i've ever seen anybody here from ghana that's a new uh awesome a new put a pin in the board welcome welcome julian thank you for coming um, I mean, thank, thank all of you for coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for coming also. Okay. So, uh, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's bring in our last building. Our biggest, coolest, biggest again. All right. Oh, I like this. I, I, I like, I'm excited about this. All right. So again, I want to try to keep, I don't want to get too bogged down in details. I do this. I want to get this mass up as quick as I can, get the important pieces on and then, uh, you know, just get it scaled down. So I'm going to start by drawing a pad like that. I'm going to bring it up. I, this is, this is what will sit down. I'm going to go a little bit bigger than I probably should because this is what will sit down into the landscape. And then we'll offset that because we got these kind of boards hanging over the edge. Something like that. Yeah. So that's our, our base that we're going to build on here. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to do all this as just one, one mass right now. Um, which may be something I end up coming back and regretting. We'll see what happens. Uh, I don't want to go too big. But the building's actually not very big inside of all this. So maybe something like, like that. And then I'll pull that shape up. So that goes up pretty high, but I'm going to stop at one story like that. And then I'm going to offset... Out like that okay and then resize some of this so this comes back doesn't quite reach all the way out there this comes out further this direction not all the way but it does come out further and then these sides look like maybe they come out to the edge so I'll grab that and I'll shift that back just using a lot of a lot of inferencing so letting grabbing pieces this is my Probably my favorite thing to do is SketchUp. I do like, we've done some like uh, machine part modeling. You guys who've been around for a while, remember we've done some of that where we go very specific and exact, and that's fun to do. It is fun to go, go in and create a model that's perfect in every way, but uh, it's also a lot of fun to just kind of come in and just model what you see. If only we had one more Friday in January, then you could model a train engine with that level of precision. But gosh darn it, it's February. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Curse so that calendar. If, you, if that front car is called an engine, but it also has an engine engine in it, is it an engine engine? Or what exactly is the uh, the appropriate naming structure there? Yeah. Or the engine point. motor. <laughs> train engine motor. motor. I I'm ninety percent sure that's not it. But there's ten percent. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> you're picking it up. Um. Yeah, I don't know. That's it. That is a an excellent question. I'm sure that there is at least one person in the in the crowd who has an answer. Whether it's right or not is you know. Depends if they're a smart person or a, we'll say, smarty pants. All right, so I'm just getting that uh, flat facade, I guess, maybe we call it. Sure, I'd call that that. All right, thanks. Just like this show. Ooh. Ooh. That was rough. All right, that's that's a pretty good start. I like the I like the way stuff's looking now. Um, 
I made a mistake right there. I did two different push-pull lengths. I should have double-clicked to automatically push-pull, but I didn't. All right, I'm going to take this. I'm doing option offset to get me my roof. Same thing, double-click here. It's the same thing I did before. Uh, when I'm offsetting panels of roofs like that, uh, you could use extensions to do things like uh, joint push-pull would have taken both at the same time and given it height. Uh, like I said, I don't have extensions installed yet. So I will just make up for the gap here by extending those two lines, pulling this down, and then getting rid of the extra. Uh, I'm going to pull this out a little ways here. Same dimension here by double-clicking, same dimension here by double-clicking. And there we go. Got that upper roof. Looks pretty cool. Um, we, uh, I just felt like I, 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 we should call it out too. Um, Tyson's asking, give us, give us some ideas because, uh, you know, we consider this to be our show collective, you know, us. But we would love to hear if you guys have some ideas for things you want to model. We kind of, I'd also love to hear what you think about, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but we tricked you all into watching a series of videos. We, uh -huh. <laughs> um, yeah, we, I mean, we tried, we tried doing series before we did multi parts of the same model and they did not go over well. In this case, we decided we'll do four separate models that are all part of a bigger model and uh, see if anybody shows up for it. And you did. So let us know what you think about that. Is it, uh, do you feel, do you feel tricked? Do you feel violated now that I told you what we did or uh, are you cool with it? Maybe a better question is, do you like this idea of a thematic uh, live stream across an entire month? Yeah, that works too. Uh, have you saved lately? J. David wants to know. There was a time. Actually, no. J. David is commanding you to do so. Okay. You got triple exclamation marks. Well, I'll say three times then. Once per exclamation point. There you go. All right. Boom. Uh, so I created sort of this, it's got like a post and beam thing around the outside, which I think is awesome. So, uh, so a while, oops. a while back, I went to a, I think it was a maker fair and we were there with some, uh, at the same time as the people are doing, I don't remember what it's called. It was basically, they made CNC houses. So it was back in that era, but they were all from, from England. And like one night we're walking around, like we went, went out to eat. And as we were walking back to the car and we were talking, we were talking about the different ways, like they were trying to talk with American accents and their go-to word. I don't know if this is how you do it, but whenever I have, if I'm going to try and fake an accent, I usually have a word or two that I use sure. and that's kind of, and then that puts me right into it. Well, the word that they were using was awesome. So every time I hear someone, say, an American say awesome, I was thinking about the fact that the, uh, the British do not say awesome. And in fact, oh. considered a tremendously American word to use such that it's, it's their go-to word to sound American. Did you say fish and chips or lift or Bobby or something so like that? I don't, I don't remember what my, I have to, so I usually go off of a, like a name. Like I feel like the name Nigel is, uh, is just inherently British. That does feel so British. As soon as I, as soon as I go into my Nigel persona and I say the word Nigel, then it's much easier to sound like it's an English, on. Englishman. Perfect. Actually, and it's funny, this is, uh, this might be a little embarrassing. Whenever I was first dating my wife, we, our first date was kind of awkward. And so we started talking in English accents and we just basically spoke with English accents the entire night. Hey, yeah. that works. That's right. We're, we're married. So I guess it, <laughs> I guess it kind of worked. Well, it didn't fail. Lawrence awesome. said they say awesome. Awesome. It sounds, sounds like it's the guy that, uh, he used to be, he was the big fat guy that would announce Alfred Hitchcock, right? Or some Wells. <laughs> Huh. Yep. All right. Okay. okay. So uh, I came in here and I created a component of this post and I evenly distributed it. it distri Whoa, that wasn't intentional. I distributed it. Spread it out. Uh, evenly uh, along this front and back wall. 
And now that I got that, I'm going to distribute it. Distribute head distributed. Ugh. All right, so I'm gonna put a post on there, or, or one of the one of these pieces on here, and then I'll grab that. You guys, I don't know if you caught that too. I did go in and I threw squares at the corners. These are just temporary. I can delete them out of the component later. But what that gives me is a grip point at any of these sides. And lining that up with the beam overhead will assure that that's centered in there. Um, so just a bit of 2D geometry makes it a lot easier to click it into where it needs to go. All right, uh, let's come in here. Let's grab all of that and this. And I'm going to option copy that straight over. I'm going to scale it to negative one. See that? Take that flip along. <laughs> I'm going to say that you just flipped along green. I don't know. Nope. See, that's I was not willing to to gamble on that. That's why I didn't I didn't do it. All right. Um, now, obviously, this one, uh, this one, this one, and this one are going to be different than the ones in the center. So I'm going to select them, right click, and I'm going to say make unique. Now, I'm going to take one of them. Just one. And I'm going to grab all this. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to snap it right there. And then get rid of this extra piece. Um, Paul pointed out that the knee brace should be 45 degrees for it to be a proper, proper to do a proper job with that support. It should, but this doesn't look 45 to me. Does it? That's the... <laughs> Everything about the way we're looking at that drawing right now just looks off. Yeah. So, I mean, it's but, weird. Like, I, I think it's a photo of something, but it kind of looks like it's CG because it almost looks isometric. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Well, especially when you, especially when you kick the whole thing slightly askew. Yeah, there's, there's definitely some distortion happening here, too. And besides, remember... <laughs> The, you're talking like an iPhone guy, okay? <laughs> no, I agree. It, it is looking a little bit steep. So here's what I'll do. I'll come in here. I'll grab this and I'll slide it. Ooh, that got ugly. Um, 1.5 inches. And then we'll have, to, we'll have to clean this up a little bit. No, that's better. You're right. Dang. All right. Let's do, do some quick cleanup. But hey, this, this is kind of exactly what I was talking about where uh, this, is what I, this is what I enjoy doing with SketchUp is this uh, just kind of almost like architectural sculpting, maybe we could call it. Did you buy that? Um, we're going to take geometry real quickly and make, make these kind of changes. And again, I, I do, I'm admitting this, that uh, because I am more uh, sculpting rather than building out of pieces, uh, if I had made those into actual physical pieces, they would have been a little bit quicker and easier to, uh, to fix there. But still, not a big deal. I mean, this is not a, a time-consuming process. There we go. Right. 45-ish. All right. So we got a couple of these guys who are maybe not facing the perfect direction. Um, so we want to spin them. What we want to do, though, is we want to spin them by the center of this square. So I'm going to grab all this piece, which I should have already done, made it a group. And then I'm going to temporarily hide it. Then I can come in and look at this and go, okay, let me come off the center of the square. And Justin's letting you know that you've got 30 minutes till two o'clock. So no problem. There we go. 
Grab this guy right here. It's pretty good. This, I mean, this, this, uh, we got a decent amount of, uh, high level geometry we can put in here. No more, no more goofing around though. Let's get, let's get, let's get serious about this. So I'm going to get rid of my special little placement pieces. I have two components, so I got to do it twice. Come into one of these and do the same thing. Just get rid of this extra geometry. I guess I don't have to. I could actually leave this in here. It's not going to hurt anything, but uh, I'll know it's there and that will bother me forever. Now I'm going to go to edit, unhide, last. That'll bring that that back. I did talk about this in a video recently too, about hiding, uh, how it should be a temporary thing and not something you do uh, on a regular basis. And, and I stand by that 100%. All right. I'm going to grab one of these guys, option copy it over here, and then we'll center it up by grabbing the middle right here on the green axis, finding the middle of this wall right here. And then I can slide it back on the red axis, right in line with this one. And then what I'll do also while I'm here is I'll option copy that across to right here. Okay, there we got our, we got all our posts in now. All right, high level geometry as I look at this thing, uh, obviously there's some more stuff going on with the roof up here. I got, I got a, a thing happening here. And then there's some kind of pieces of trim that trace out the doors and windows. So I figure I'll throw that geometry on there too. And then, uh, We'll call that good, start start putting some texture on here. All right, so I'm gonna try to emulate what we've got going here. So I'm going to, oops, draw a line across like that. And then I'm gonna offset, I'm gonna offset a specific amount here. I'm gonna offset one inch. And that's gonna be my trim offset for everything uh, throughout this structure. So with trim, uh, since I'm not terribly concerned again with, uh, the exact way stuff meets, I'm going to take the panel on the inside and push that in. So I'm going to push that in a uh, quarter inch. That's going to give me my trim sticking out like this. If I take my trim out, then every place I have a corner, I'm going to have an empty space. I'll have to go do another push pull to overlap. So by pushing my panels in, I'm actually going to save myself a little bit of time. So like right over here, maybe I take this line, option copy that over one inch. And then if I do the same push pull here, that trim's done. And then I can do the same thing here. I'll grab this line and this line, offset. Actually, let's go one inch. Trace that straight up. So here, one inch. So yeah, setting that in is going to be easier, quicker than uh, trying to extend the other corners out. All right, there we go. So the trim's all done up there. And then on this top here, I'm going to go ahead and push this back down and do this. There's a couple ways I could do this, but I'm going to try to keep this simple. Do a couple of offsets like this to emulate this kind of, it's got kind of a molding thing going on up here. That kind of steps a couple times and then gets even bigger. Then that piece just goes, yeah, just give me kind of a, Something like that. And it looks like we got a couple, couple little uh, detail pieces. Come out like this. So I'm going to grab all that. I'm going to copy one down here. All right. There you go. I'm going to call that good. Um, Damn. 
So I was pointing out that that wall is is there for gunmen to hide behind whenever you're having a big Western shootout. Yeah, I'm I'm sure this uh, piece of wood siding would deter most bullets. Maybe they put metal. Maybe they put steel up there. I don't know. If I were designing one, I would definitely make that thing as robust as possible. <laughs> Actually, whenever I think of that facade like that, I always think of um, blazing saddles, which at the end just turns into this big, this brawl, gut and fight, whatever happening, and like the walls are getting knocked down, and all of a sudden they're just running across all the the different sets in Hollywood. And uh, what a good movie! What a what a inappropriate but funny you know not not all classic comedies age well that was one that didn't do a good job but still funny all right um so i am just getting some rough shapes in here for my doors not again not super uh Worried about getting uh, a perfect amount of detail, but enough to tell that, uh, hey, that's a door. That's really what I'm looking for. Um, and then we got a couple windows in here, too. I'm just going to drop a rectangle like that. Get that centered. Oh, oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, there's center. Okay. And I'm going to copy that and put another one right here. Copy that and I'll put another one in the center of this wall. Should probably turn that so the window is the same direction as the wall. All right. And then I'll just throw another, another, another one of those straight on the other side. And with, with all of those for right now, all I'm going to do is so I'm reverse that face because I want that to not be that way. And I'm just going to double click to stick those in because what I'll do now is the same thing I did before. I'm going to offset that one inch. Not on all sides, not on the bottom. I'll take that and just drop that back down. Have you ever... Have you seen any kind of extensions? Do you know if they create something that's like an, an aligned by feature, sort of like you have in, I think you're usually more in like desktop publishing kind of editors, but there, have you seen anything like that for SketchUp? Yes, there actually, I think there's a tool called Align. Um, I'd have to go double check. And I know there's a couple of 2D tool suites that have something similar to that. Um, I think TIG has one. Uh, I can't remember the others, but yeah, there's 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 some stuff out there that lets you do that. Um, I tend to not end up using those because I use I just am so used to using inferencing instead that uh, I don't really mess with that. I find. I see, I see there's one called, uh, there's a Curic Align. That's one. A video out there. Uh, Justin did a video. Justin Geist did a video about that. Um, let's see if I can find any other ones here. Do, do, Curic Align. Um, I don't know. That's all anybody talks about, apparently, is Curic. I think that's the most recent one. Oh, Philip said DDA Burr, Burr had one. That's a name I haven't seen in years. There's one just called Align to Oh, the one, one by DDA is Align Tool. All right. Cool. There you go, Disney. There's a couple options for you. There's options. All right. Um, okay, so that's a pretty quick quick setup. 
It looks like we got some blue paint. I like that look, so I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to grab everything, all the surfaces, and I'm going to I'm going to give it that bluish color. That's not quite correct. So, it's a little more a little, little more gray. There we go. Um, so that's intentional uh, because can't, I can't I can't talk in paint apparently. All right, there you go. Um, so the reason I give everything the trim color is it's gonna be way easier to come in and apply a material to this face, this face, this face, and this face than it is to come to each side of the trim and paint there paint there, paint there. So I'll do the color that's on the small faces first and then come in and reapply stuff to the big faces. That's just make it a little bit easier. So speaking of which, let's do that. Let's come in here and let's get some siding back. Or what? Hey, we're on roof. Let's do roof. All right, let's do a different uh, roof than... It looks like I got roof tiles here and then metal here. So I'll start here. That's not, that size not not gonna work. Um, so let's position that. Let's make it a lot smaller. I'll work. I'm going to change the color though. I don't like that color very much. A little too, a little too bright and happy. So again, double click, click over here. And yeah, that's better. All right, and then up here is where we'll stick that same metal roofing we used before. I might do the same thing where I'm at a weird scale right now, so that's why all my textures are showing up extra big. Um, which actually, I should probably do that. I should probably start by saying, okay, say this line right here is three feet wide. Let's go ahead, throw a tape measure on there. Call that three foot. Yes, please. Whoops. Got an issue there. <laughs> Whoopsie. And what that's only happening because you didn't make those in 45 degree angles at first. <laughs> I'm I'm paying for it. Yeah, that's that's exactly why. <laughs> All right. So if I come in here now, this is in a group and these are still their own components, but it's inside a larger group. So if I do that now, if I come in here click from here to here. Say three foot. Yes. I just resized the whole group. Okay. Third tries charm. Come into this one. There we go. Now. Oh my gosh. Grab all that. Make it a group. Enter that group. There we go. Now. Sometimes it's not the third time. Sometimes it's more than that. All right, so not it's not a huge building, but uh, yeah, so it's three feet wide, almost four three by four windows. That's realistic. All right, so let's. You suppose that that big open area next to it is for like a little farmers market kind of thing. You can get out there with all your fresh fruits and vegetables. I would assume so. I mean, I can't think of anything else you'd use it for. Psh, no. Well, well, I guess also your your coonhound is going to be sleeping out there, kind of lazy, just leaning up against post. That's true. Yeah. And where, where else are you going to sit to play a banjo? And the sheriff's going to have to sit back here and smoke a cigarette with his hat pulled down over his eyes. That's true. Got to be able to lean against that. Man, we really know our history. <laughs> we do. <laughs> All right. Let's grab siding. I want to grab that. I like this, this siding right here. Um, uh, I use it a lot. Uh, but a lot of times I do this specifically where I just make it vertical. And then I will apply that to all these faces. Yeah, it's coming along. All right. Uh, let's speed through some more stuff here. Um, throw that on there. Let's 
shrink that down a bit anymore. Brian suggested putting a, a, a drunk passed out on the, like, probably not up on the proper platform. He has to be, he probably had to have fallen off the edge of the the deck there. Ah, another historian I see. <laughs> All right. Uh, just to, to differentiate it from that, the glass, let's go through and grab a uh, maybe aqua color. Oh, well, actually, I think this door is should be white. So there we go. This is what I was talking about the trim. You're trying to uh, color something. This is actually kind of a pain in the butt to do. So this is why I try to color pre-color all my trim the same. Then when I have to come in and uh, only on little pieces do I have to worry about this kind of thing. It's definitely easier with a 3D mouse than uh, than orbiting though. All right. Or doing doing it in real life. That's true. Oh, I hate painting. <laughs> I do Sorry. too. Oh, I just hate it. I hate painting so badly. I like the idea of it, but most of most projects I do are raw, unfinished wood. That's purely because I'm raising. Plan. Although I did. Uh, have you ever heard of milk paint? I have. I've never used it. So I just found out that they have like a factory seconds thing. They call them oops paint. And they sell them for like 60% off. So I just bought three quarts, but they're powder. So you make mix it yourself. So they're going to last forever. But I just got a gray and an orange and a blue. And I look forward to trying and avoiding using them because I don't like to paint, I guess, technically. Yeah. But us it's it's not even that I'm a cheapskate for sure, but uh it's not even the the cost of the thing so much as yeah, the just oh, the painting oh, yeah. process no, is the worst thing in the world. I just keep I keep putting it off for I don't know, for whatever reason, but then all of a sudden they're like, Well, sixty percent off, and I'm like, Well, I guess I have to buy some now. And so then, I mean, it was it was one of those you'd be a fool not to kind of. And argues that logic, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna grab the the. There we go. Wow, this is there's a serious grade over here. Let's let's keep working with this. Let's try to find something a little bit, little little more friendly. Less severe? Nope, guess not. All right, that's what we got. All right, let's... Uh... <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. Let's get it back just, just, just to skosh. There we go. Well... I, I like the way this is all turning out. This looks uh, pretty cool. I feel like this building should be back behind there somewhere. You can slide over this way just a touch. Keep things a little, a little closer together. All right. Let's get, get a nice thumbnail for this. Oh, that stuff. That looks pretty good. I like the way those turned out. That was pretty cool. Three buildings in like an hour and a half, too. Now, that's not too bad. Structures. I don't think I guess you can't call a water tower a building. But in the movie Logan, Wolverine did keep Professor X in an old water tower and he lived there. So, you know, there's there's a precedent. There you go. Not a bad place to live, I guess. I mean, I've seen uh, you know, there's a there's how many different shows now that are about just taking designing houses out of you know, I don't know. They're called like fabulous houses, and then yeah. someone gets a water tower and turns that into a house, and you're like, mm, maybe <laughs> fabulous. Yeah, <laughs> air quote that. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I think overall, considering we had nothing four weeks ago, the fact that we got uh, we got these train cars, we got some buildings, we got some track, we got a we got a whole thing. I think this turned out pretty cool. I kind of I like this. I like where I like where we ended up. Even left enough time to put a ladder on the uh, water tower. Oh my gosh! <sighs> Sorry, Bill. Bill said it. I'm just I'm don't don't shoot the messenger. Uh, 
technically you're all too far away from your shoot, so I'll just do it instead. It's true. Although it is definitely an American thing to do. Shoot people? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do my ladder. I am Brad going wanted, to... Uh -huh. Brad was wondering why you didn't use the option click to paint all connected surfaces when you were doing that trim earlier. Uh, because it would have painted all the... Walls, all the blue too, trim. not just the trim. Yeah. yeah okay. Because I, I wanted to keep my blue trim still tr still blue, so I did all right. that. All right. Here's how I'm going to make a quick and dirty ladder. Because we're talking scale, right? So um, I got a rectangle. Looks like a rectangle. That's, that was easy. I'm going to come yeah. in here. So far, so good. <laughs> Are you about to buy a texture? Ladder texture. Done. Ooh. That's... I, I like the way you think. I got I got to rethink my choices here. Um, I was just gonna go with this, but yeah. So I'm gonna grab that square, option copy it down to here, divide by, I don't know, eight. Nope, divide by nine. There we go, divide by 10. And then I get rid, whoops. <laughs> that was not the piece I wanted to get rid of. All right, so. That gives me an outline. Actually, I'm cleaning this up. I don't have to clean it up. Watch this. I'll just grab the piece I want. Option copy that over here. Now I can, oh boy, oh boy. I'm rushing. I'm clicking like a crazy guy. Take that, give that a little depth. And with that, Ah, I got a ladder. Take that, put it right up against the edge, and then we'll give it just, just a touch of a turn like that. Um, I'm not gonna give it the same wood color because I want it to stand out a little bit. So let's uh, let's just give it a solid brown color. Uh, maybe even a little darker than that. I'll come in here and just. Dirt. All right, there we go. And then I will grab that ladder, option copy that up. Whoa, Woo. crazy, crazy stuff's happening. Uh, I'll put it right here. And then I will turn that so it faces towards the water tower. Come up here. And I did put it on a different side than it was in the other model because I'm kind of thinking this will end up as a thumbnail and I wanted to be able to see all these pieces. But that was kind of cool. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're right that the, the ladder had to happen. It really uh, tied the room together. It is the proverbial rug of a water tower. It is. Yeah, I never, I never knew how to express my feelings about water tower ladders till now. All right. Sweet. Well, I don't think it can get doneer than that, so I'm going to call it done. Let's go ahead and save that. Looks good. I like it. Um, yeah. So again, uh, just to reiterate this, what we were just talking about earlier, if you guys have some good ideas, we're kind of playing with the idea since it's February. Um, we're not going to spend a month doing Valentine's, don't worry. But we're kind of thinking winter wonderlandy kind of thing. Here, especially in Colorado, is when it gets, uh, February gets real cold. And uh, if we ever have snow that sticks around, it's about now. So we were thinking about doing like a, some kind of a, a winter model and, and love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, but if you have other ideas, please do leave them in the comments or on our forum. Let us know if there's some other ideas you think would make good live models. Uh, I always say in the videos, we like making this, these live models, like making videos, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. So let us know. Uh, in the meantime, if you are dying for some more SketchUp slash design related content, you can join us next week. Next Wednesday, we'll be doing a live recording of our podcast, Donuts Design and Debate. We'll be talking about 
Uh, retro redesign. You know how companies go grab one of their old logos and bring it out and dust it off and tell you that it's new? Uh, we're going to be talking about that. And we're going to be talking about it not just for ourselves, but with CU professor Danny Rankin. He's going to be coming in. He's a design professor, and he's going to uh, he's going to school us. I, I have a feeling. I have a feeling that he's going to have a much better argument than what I will put together. So, uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. I think. I like fun. I, do, I think I, I'll, I think I'll show up. Hey, hey, that's great. Well, one more person show up to that recording, but no, but nice. do show up live because we always end our live uh, podcast recordings with the opportunity for you, the audience, to vote uh, on who who wins the debate, who wins points for for different sections of uh, of the the. The debate section uh and it's a lot of fun it's and it's not we don't we don't get real technical it's uh it's probably more professional than some of the recent presidential debates i've seen but uh it's also still kind of done with a lot of intention to be fun and enjoyable and uh usually some people learn some things but uh yeah other than that i mean this is this turned out and i gotta figure out how to weatherman this thing and look behind myself hey that looks pretty good uh yeah thanks for hanging out with us uh the whole month thank you if, if you were if you watched all four of these then that then really appreciate that if you just joined us really appreciate that actually if you just came by really appreciate that i shouldn't i shouldn't make anything if, if you do exist it. we appreciate your existence thank you for coming uh thank but, you for living and being there yeah we appreciate that so we hope you guys have a great weekend have a great week uh we'll see you next friday if we don't see you on wednesday uh, have a great time. Stay safe, stay sane, and uh, we will see you later. See you guys.